Alva, I've been fascinated with consciousness my entire life. I even went into neuroscience, did a PhD because of it. But these were in the early days, and consciousness was not something that was talked about in polite scientific circles. And then I went bad into investment banking, and a few decades later, I turned around, followed the field, and suddenly consciousness is, 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 is a hot topic. And if you look at it, th th there's very different views. I mean, some would claim that consciousness is so important, but it's really an illusion. Do you, do you see consciousness as an illusion? We think, we feel, the world shows up for us. That's what consciousness is. That's not an illusion. The way scientists have tended to approach consciousness, traditionally, is by asking, what is it inside of us that thinks, that feels, that experiences, that, that is conscious? What is it that judges and decides? What is that thing inside of us? And because you can't find anything, you say consciousness may not be real. Some people say, well, something inside of us must be conscious, so that thing must be non-physical, immaterial, spiritual, call it soul, call it mind. Um, and that leads to all sorts of puzzles and mysteries. How does something immaterial, something which is not physical, interact with the physical? After all, I decide I'm going to go to the bank, and then my body moves to the bank. That's a physical event. Physical events have physical causes, but... If it's a decision, a decision is not a physical event, it's a mental event, so then it suddenly seems that we have, a, we have a puzzle here. So other scientists come along, other thinkers come along and say, no, there is a thing inside of us which thinks and feels and judges and is conscious. It is the brain. The problem is that it turns out, after decades and decades of devoted work on this, that we actually have no better idea how the actions of cells in the head give rise to consciousness than we do how consciousness arises out of immaterial spiritual processes. So the brain science approach, while it seems to have the respectability, the, the sort of the imprimatur of the scientific worldview, is actually not really going uh, anywhere. Well, look, there are definite correlations in the progress we've made, certainly since I've been in the field the last 40 years. I mean, you, you really can see increasing correlations between things in the brain and things in the world. The, uh, individual neurons, we put l l electrodes, we can see their electrical activity correlating very specifically with things in your visual field. That's right. Dualism is the view that there's, 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 there's mind, the universe divides into two fundamental different kinds of things, the mental and the physical. Um, the, the science is approaching a non-dualistic view. The brain is the mind. The problem is that they both share the common assumption that we should be looking for mind inside of us. What is that thing inside of us that does the thinking, that does the deciding, that does the experiences? Is it spiritual or is it physical? That's, that's I think, the problematic assumption. We need instead to take seriously the possibility that consciousness isn't something that happens inside us. It's something that we ourselves do through with our bodies and interacting with the world around us, exploring the environment. Consciousness doesn't depend only on what's going on inside my head, even if it does depend on what's going on inside my head. Well, the first thing, is this consciousness something that, that's a real unity to begin with? Because some would say that it's not. It's just the illusion of, of unity, and it's really these different sort of brain systems, uh, and sometimes uh, my, uh, my visual system is, is, is calling for attention. Like now I'm looking at you, and there's some sound in the background that I don't hear. If that sound in the background was a, you know, if I had a baby, my child crying, I would suddenly focus on that, and you would be oblivious to me. So th th there's this complex competition of different sensory modalities, and that's what, that's what appears to be consciousness, but consciousness is just an illusion because it's just this competition. And so there's, there's not even a problem to deal with. I, I disagree with that. Um, there's lots of discrete processes going on inside the head, but again, that's not where we should look for consciousness. We, we occupy a place in the world, there's all sorts of things going on around us, and consciousness is that activity of keeping tabs, keeping touch, paying attention to, interacting with the world around us. And that's your definition. That would be your definition. Our interaction, I mean, you can have an inert uh, machine having an interaction of some kind. I mean, how are you getting to that essence of, of what we mean by consciousness? The world shows up for us. There's a pole, here's a table. Here I am talking to you. Um, and there is no 
point in our discussion that we can go to prior to that. A physicist would describe the situation rather differently. A physicist might say, well, there's, there's atoms bouncing around. There's, uh, there's quantum processes. And the photons processes. that bounce off those objects, some are absorbed and some bounce off. And the ones that bounce off and hit my retina in a certain way get yeah. transmitted and processed. And, yeah. and suddenly I, I see it. Right. Consciousness is, is being in touch with the world around us. And not any old form of interaction with the world around us is, is being in touch with the world around us. So, some would look to hallucinations, mirages, dreams, uh, uh, appearances of stars if I hit, fall and hit my mm -hmm. head so I see things that are not, not real. Mm -hmm. uh, so these are internal processes, mm -hmm. hallucinations, uh, physical dis disturbances to our sensory systems that produce mm -hmm. visions, and all of those things impinge our consciousness, and they're not real. Mm -hmm. So doesn't that corroborate the idea that consciousness is something that is inside of us and not real? That doesn't mean we shouldn't study it, but much less significant than people would say. Not real and only inside our heads. It's funny, the, th the, the, the fact that we're sometimes mistaken doesn't mean that everything is a mistake. The fact that it, one can experience a color in a dream doesn't mean that there's no difference between experiencing a color in a dream and out of a dream. It's an interesting fact that although you can dream certain experiences, it may very well be the case that you can't, um, experience, you can't experience in a dream everything that you could experience outside of a dream. One of the things that's interesting about experience is its density, its robustness and detail. Um, and I think that the brain probably isn't, isn't able on its own to generate all that detail. The detail is in the world, and we make use of that fact in our experiential lives. If I, I have a sense of the periphery of my visual field, for example, um, um, in what does my sense of the presence of an item on the periphery of my visual field consist? Well, all I need to do is turn my eyes, and there it is. Now, prior to that, it would, it would be in your perception, but it wouldn't be in your consciousness. I mean, a, a lot of things that have been in per periphery, in fact, if I'm not focusing on it, I'll, I'll be oblivious to. I mean, you know, the typical thing, I'll go home after a day of talking to my interesting friends like you, and I'll walk into the room, and my wife will get mad at me because I didn't notice the, the new painting on the wall, mm -hmm. which is, you know, 8 feet by 12 feet or something, mm -hmm. and I just didn't see it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, uh, how then do we understand the essence of what consciousness is, and is it something that is just emerging within us in this illusory way that we think is real, but is really not? That's a fascinating question. Um, I think what it shows, in a, in a way it, it, makes, it makes the point I've been trying to get at, which is that consciousness isn't just a matter of events triggered inside us by things outside us, because things are triggered inside us all the time by all sorts of things outside of us, right, and they don't right. rise to consciousness. Right. So, so which are the things that we experience and which are the things that, that don't? A lot of it depends on our context, on our interests, on our understanding, on our knowledge. For instance, I can walk into a room and there's a piece of maybe offensive graffiti on the wall. If it's in a language that's foreign to me, I'll take no offense. I may not even notice it as words. But if it's in a language that I know, boom, I may be shocked. I may actually be affected emotionally by, this, by what jumps out at me. So consciousness isn't a matter of having a feeling. It isn't a matter of a momentary occurrence. It's a kind of an ongoing grappling with things, making use of background knowledge, such as the meanings of the words, uh, the, the language in question, um, and, and what's important. So one of, the, one of the big divisions, I think, in thinking about consciousness is whether we want to think of it as something merely um, sort of at the feeling level or whether it's more tightly integrated with, with knowledge and understanding and culture and, and, uh, um, and um, our, our, our social lives. And so is it real? And is that an important question? Is it important to ask whether consciousness is, a, is real or an illusion? Because maybe the question is not that important of its own merit. Maybe it is what it is, and maybe it's real, maybe it's an illusion. But, but some have said that this is a critical question because we, we, have, we have maybe elevated the field to more important than it's due, or we have distorted the meaning of it by claiming that consciousness is real when it's really an, an artifact of everything else we do. Mm. There are theoretical illusions about consciousness, and uncovering those theoretical illusions is 
very important. And I think people who say consciousness is an illusion, often what they really have in mind are certain bad theoretical pictures of what consciousness is. But consciousness is no illusion. Um, what we need is to understand it right. I think part of the, one, the idea of consciousness, which maybe is illusory, is the idea that consciousness is inside us, that all of this is in me, that the world is a kind of internal representation, which is available to my introspection. Um, if you introspect, there's very little you can find, because there's very little inside us. The world is outside of us. Um, and our awareness is an awareness of it, one which depends on it as well as us. The world makes itself available to us, given that we have all sorts of skills of bringing it into focus. I, I see this table, and I see it from a particular point of view, and yet I experience its shape. From it, the table is rectangular. From here, it looks somewhat trapezoidal. Um, its rectangularity, in a sense, shows up to me here now, but because I understand that, well, here's how it would look if I were to move over there. So my understanding of my involvement with the table is, is necessary for enabling me to understand what the table is. I couldn't do it without the table, and I couldn't do it without my understanding. So there is no, um, there, there's, there's, the illusion comes from thinking that consciousness is this internal, autonomous, something which is detached from the rest of our biological involvement with life.